Wee Gillis by Monroe Leaf, illustrated by Robert Lawson. Wee Gillis lived in Scotland. His real name was Alistair Roderick Caligachi Dalhousie Goen Donnie Bristol MacMac, but that took too long to say, so everybody just called him Wee Gillis. His mother's relations were all lowlanders. They stayed down in the valleys and raised long-haired cows. His father's relations were all highlanders. They stayed up in the hills and stalked stags. Wee Gillis didn't know which he wanted to be, a lowlander or a highlander. His mother's relations all thought that his father's relations were very foolish to run and climb and creep around the hills stalking stags. His father's relations all thought that his mother's relations were very silly to drive and call and milk their long-haired cows. Wee Gillis didn't know, but he watched them both and he was cheerful and amiable. So for one year, he went to live in the lowlands with his mother's relations. Every day he rose early and ate a large bowl of oatmeal. Then he drove the long-haired cows out along the valleys and at night he called and called them and drove them home again in time for his mother's relations to milk them. Once he was late in getting them home, then the relations all asked him what had kept him and he had to tell them that the cows wouldn't come when he called. Then the relations all said that he didn't shout loud enough and that the cows couldn't hear him through the heavy mist. So every night when the mist would come down over the valleys, Wee Gillis would shout a little louder than he had before. That was fine for his lungs, and by the end of the year, they were very, very strong. On the first day of the new year, Wee Gillis went up to the highlands. Every day, he rose early and ate a large bowl of oatmeal with his father's relations. Then he set out walking and crawling, running and creeping all over the hills, stalking stags. He would hide behind thistles and sit on the heather and sometimes he would have to be so quiet for hours at a time that you would have thought that he was a stone. Once, while he was stalking, he sighed a big sigh because he had stayed still for so long, and the noise that it made frightened a stag so that it ran away. Then the relations all told Wee Gillis that he didn't keep quiet enough and that he must learn to hold his breath. So day after day, sitting among the thistles and on the heather, Wee Gillis would hold his breath longer and longer to keep from sighing so he wouldn't frighten the stags. That was fine for his lungs, and by the end of the year, they were very, very, very strong. So year in and year out, Wee Gillis would take turns calling the cows in the lowlands and stalking the stags in the highlands, and all the while his lungs grew stronger and stronger. <laughs>
At last, the day came when he must make up his mind and decide forever which to be, a lowlander who called cows or a highlander who stalked stags. Bright and early in the morning, there were two loud knocks on his door. When he opened it, there stood his Uncle Andrew from the Lowlands and his Uncle Angus from the Highlands. Gillis put on his kilt in a hurry and away they went out into the morning. They walked and walked, not saying a word, down through the valleys and up over the hills until they found just the right spot for deciding. Then his Uncle Andrew and his Uncle Angus stopped and stood very still. They turned to Wee Gillis. He was exactly halfway up the side of the medium-sized hill, not in the lowlands and not in the highland, just in the middle, and he had to choose forever. Gillis looked down and Gillis looked up. Then he looked at his uncles and they began to talk. First they pleaded and then they begged very softly and very quietly, one at a time, and they politely waited for each to finish what he had to say before the other began. But still, we Gillis could not decide. So the uncle's voices grew louder and louder, and they didn't wait for each other to finish talking anymore, but shouted and screamed and yelled until they jumped up and down and stamped their feet. You could hear them shouting all the way down in the valleys and all the way up the hills. Suddenly, his uncle stopped jumping and shouting because a very large man had come up behind them. He was carrying something brown and big, but he put it down beside a rock, and then he looked at Wee Gillis, and then at Uncle Andrew, and then at Uncle Angus. When they were very quiet, he sat down on a rock. He picked up the big brown thing that looked like a sack with sticks on it and took a deep breath and puffed his cheeks and shut his eyes and blew into one end of it with all his might. But... Nothing happened. He shook his head sadly and tried again, but nothing happened. And then he was very sad and he said so. He was almost ready to cry because he was a bagpiper and he had just made these fine new bagpipes to play on, but he had made them too big and he didn't have breath enough to blow them. Uncle Andrew was sorry for him, so he tried to blow them, but he couldn't. Uncle Angus was sorry for him too, so he tried to blow them, but he couldn't. So they all sat down on rocks and were sad together. Wee Gillis wished that his uncles would ask him to try, but they didn't. So he just stood and looked as though he would like to. After a long time, the large man noticed him and shook his head slowly, but because Wee Gillis looked so wanting to, the large man asked him if he would like to try, and Wee Gillis said aye. So he did. First he took a deep breath the way he used to when he was going to call the cows on a misty night in the lowlands. Then he held it the way he used to when he was sitting very still, stalking stags in the highland. And then he blew with all the force in his very, very strong lungs. The bag filled up and let out a screech 
through every one of its pipes, and the large man and Uncle Andrew and Uncle Angus fell off their rocks with surprise. So the large man taught him how to make music, and now Wee Gillis is welcomed down the lowlands and up in the highlands. But most of the time, he just stays in his house halfway up the side of the medium-sized hill and plays the biggest bagpipes in all Scotland. Wee Gillis <laughs>